Our guest today is the beautiful Stella Parton. Hi, Stella. Hi, Archie. Good to see you. You are beautiful. Thank you. How come you so got the prettiest mouth and teeth I've ever seen? Oh, thank you. I used uh, Colgate this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you come from a pretty good-sized family. Uh, yeah, there's uh, 12 of us in the family. Oh, how many boys and girls? Uh, there's six boys and six girls. And mom and daddy and about 14 cousins. <laughs> <laughs> all over the place. Right. There's partners all over. Of course, I'm up all there all the time hollers. anyhow in Pigeon Forge, you know, mm -hmm. that little theater there. And mm -hmm. I know all your kin folks. They all come to the shows, huh? Oh, yeah. Good, good. Ah, well, they got their own thing, too, some of the boys, you uh -huh. know, Bill. Yeah. They've got their own theater, so yeah. uh, they don't come around much because we're doing shows at the same time. Now, you know, I mentioned in our introduction that you had... Uh, uh, done some acting recently. What, what has you been doing? Archie, this past year I did a production of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. I did the lead uh, of Millie in that out in California. Had a real good time. It was very difficult uh, because there was a lot of dancing and acrobatic type uh, acting in it, uh, dancing and acting. And then I took uh, uh, Best Little Whorehouse on the road for six months and we did uh, 116 performances in 82 different cities. So you're that was not, fun. You're not still doing that? No, I just finished about two weeks ago. Are you going to do it anymore? Not that particular production. I've been offered several other uh, productions, so I'm considering doing uh, Annie Oakley for two weeks in Kansas City this summer. I've been asked to do Monica in I Love My Wife. And uh, Peter Pan, I've uh, been asked to do that. I don't know if I can do all that uh, flying through the air on those wires or not. But uh, oh, yeah, I'm excited yeah. about uh, all the opportunities that have been offered to me. So we'll see what happens. Uh, how, how much do you weigh? Uh, this week, about 98 pounds, I well, think. I, I usually weigh around 94 uh, to 98. People can throw you through the air easy. I think that's the only reason they asked me to do it. I don't I think I know it's... some guys that uh, throws a football that heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if I can't fly, at least they can drag me through the air, can't they? <laughs> <laughs> How did, uh, did the challenge to acting, was that very strange to you, or it was, did you study? Uh, no, I didn't. I seem to have always backed into everything I've gotten into. Instead of walking into it, I seem to back into it. How did that happen? You know, you... I was offered, uh, I was offered an audition, uh, at the World's Fair when it was in Knoxville to yeah. do uh, a play up there and I did uh, get the uh, the part but I couldn't do it because of my road commitments. I had wanted to do a bunch of stage acting. I had wanted to get into that because I felt that the challenge of that would be uh, very uh, good for me uh, in order to take it into uh, incorporate it into my performing as a singer and entertainer. And so when I was offered Seven Brides, I thought this has got to be one of the most difficult things to learn in uh, nine days of rehearsal with all the dancing and uh, the show tunes. They're not like attitude songs like country music songs are. So, and I don't read music and I, I never had an act, uh, acting or a dancing lesson. So I thought, well, if I can absorb enough information and do this, uh, then I'll be ready for another role. And I wanted to be able to work in front of a live audience so I'd get that instant feedback because an audience never lies to you. Right. You That's... know if you're messing up right away because they don't laugh. If it's supposed to be a funny line, you deliver it uh, wrong, then it's not funny. So you can have that reference for the next performance. Mm -hmm. So it's never frozen in time forever like on uh, acetates or, you know, vinyl or film. Stella? How many of your brothers and sisters are involved in show business? About six of us this week. Uh, six there's, of us. Yeah. There's uh, four girls now singing and uh, recording, and two, two boys. And my sister Willadine is uh, writing uh, her third book now. So. Definitely. And what's happened to the others? I used to take care of them. There's two or three there that's just ordinary people then, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I have two brothers that are in construction work, and uh, I have a brother that's uh, just farming now. Were you and Dolly, really? Now, tell me the truth. Were you and Dolly pretty close? Yeah, we were close, and we Never. still are close, uh, but we did fight, I mean, like all kids do. Oh, but, no. but Cassie and me fought, too, and 
Frida and me fight. You didn't fight. Oh, sure we did. You didn't. You never We didn't lost fight, you. but we argued all the time. You never lose your temper, do you? Oh, sure. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good mental exercise. Well, now, Dolly was the first one, I guess. She's the first one to make it in show business. Uh-huh. You know, when she was 12 years old, I remember walking up to me and telling me, point blank, point, I'll be a big one one of these days. Oh, did she? Yes, yeah, she sure did. <laughs> you know, and I looked down, and I said, well, I don't know. Lord of mercy. You know, but who knows? That's right. From one day to the next. When Now, she made it. When did you decide to? do your thing actually I started performing uh, when I was nine years old and, and grew up singing on radio and television in Knoxville and around Sevierville but when I graduated from high school uh, in 1967 I started working with uh, my own band and started working up and down the East Coast around Washington DC and uh, New Jersey and Baltimore and I've been doing this ever since you and I were on the same label for a while mm-hmm Electra. I did four albums for Electra. Now, who were the biggest influences on your music when you were growing up? I know Dolly bound to have something to do, to do with that, but maybe somebody else. Well, uh, Archie, I guess I was uh, influenced by everybody from Ernest Tubb to uh, Elvis Presley to uh, the Beatles. I grew up in the 60s, so yeah. of course I was influenced by Petula Clark and the Supremes, early Supremes, and Fats Domino and, you know, Chubby Checker and... Did you go through a period in your life where you preferred the Beatles, we'll say? Because you were at the right age for that. Yeah, when I was in high school, I, you know, had to listen to the Beatles so I could dance. Go to the sock <laughs> hop, you know. Went along but I listened crowd. to the Grand Ole Opry on Saturday night. Yeah. Always listened to the Grand Ole Opry on Saturday night. When, when did you write your first song? Uh, I think I must have been about... Uh, seven or eight when I'm it wasn't you didn't write songs then you made up songs we'd say why don't we uh, make up some songs today but now we call it writing songs but I was about seven or eight I performed uh, one of my own compositions uh, in the junior miss pageant when I was in high school and I was recording some of my own material by the time I was uh, out of high school did some of those early things get recorded oh I recorded them I mean, did they get on a major label? No. Anything? No, but some of my material has been recorded by myself. Oh, I know uh, that. Yeah, but I mean, no, say when not you were that nine early years stuff. Old, no, no, after, no. After you wouldn't do that. Then. No, I wouldn't do What's that. Wrong with that. No. How did your professional career get started? Was it in, in records? Uh, no, actually, I would have to say that it was uh, working with a band, uh, in you know, the club circuit. We have some information about when you first started. You used a different name. For a while I did when I had a gospel group. I, uh, I'll go back and say that I started working in the clubs, you know, and then for a while I decided I wouldn't do that. I had originally wanted to be a missionary. So I thought, well, the uh, closest thing I can to do to be a missionary is to do gospel music and work in, you did, know, in gospel music that way. Did you organize your own gospel group? Oh, yeah. I booked my own group and organized the group, rehearsed the group twice a week. And, do you like, you uh, still like that music? Yeah, I love it. I write a lot of that That's stuff. My, I, I have to be honest with you. I, it's my favorite music. I, I, I love like it. it. And I, I like the quartets. Mm -hmm. I like to be associated with them. Mm -hmm. And they're interesting people to be around. Yeah. What made you go back to using Stella Park? Now, what was your name then? Uh, Stella Carroll. I would use that name because uh, I had been advised to by several people uh, so as not to confuse me with Dolly. But the first time I got to perform on the Grand Ole Opry stage, Grant Turner uh, knew that I was Stella Park, and, and he couldn't remember my stage name. <laughs> so he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, make welcome Stella Stevens. And my name was Stella Carroll. So I thought, well, to heck with it, you know, it doesn't matter who I am, if, you know, if I'm capable of doing the job, it doesn't matter who I'm related to, I'll succeed, uh, if, if it's meant for me to. We'll be right back with Stella Parton after this. It's just four little letters, it's easy to say. We're talking with Stella Parton. Stella, back in the mid-70s, 
uh, you got into this thing called well, The Ode to Olivia. Mm -hmm. well, what was that about? Well, it was a song uh, about uh, in support of Olivia Newton-John when she wore, uh, won the uh, Female Vocalist of, of the Year Award. In support of her? Yeah, and it was kind of a reprimand, I guess, uh, on the industry in Nashville because they were uh, kind of bummed out that she had won when she wasn't really considered a country artist. And what was the reaction to the people in uh, the music industry here in Nashville? How did they feel about that? They didn't think it was a very nice thing for me to be so outspoken and, and say that at the time because everybody was up in arms about the way the awards had gone uh, in 74. But I felt like, you know, uh, country music was uh, into a change. And uh, if a person wins an award, uh, apparently they deserve it. So why put them down for it? So my song was basically a reprimand to the industry. And I'm, you know, known for well, reprimanding the industry well, uh, uh, on know, occasion. What we call the establishment, and I don't know whether I'm a member of it or not, but there's one thing about it. Sometimes you have to do something to get their attention. Well, uh, I do that occasionally, but uh, it's not always uh, looked at in the best way, I don't think. I but admire I still say what I think. I admire anybody that's got the guts to go ahead and do what they feel is the proper thing. Well, I always do that, whether it's guts or just... Uh, Stupidity, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, try it. If it do don't it. work, well, back off, you know, and tell everybody it wasn't your idea. <laughs> I could do that. I never thought of that. The next time when I get in trouble for spouting oh, yeah, off, I'll say, say Archie was... told me that that's what we should have done. I told him that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the next time I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, don't forget that. <laughs> now, you must have been one of the first to recognize the coming trend of country music at that time. Now, were you happy to see it going more pop? Yeah, because uh, I feel that, uh, uh, don't get me wrong now, I still love uh, the traditional country music and I still feel that my music is uh, more influenced by the traditional sound of uh, country harmonies than anything. But uh, I do uh, and have always done a lot of pop and uh, kind of rock flavored stuff on my live shows. And so I was glad to see that uh, trend. Well now, uh, the ode to Olivia, did that pave the way for another record which turned out to be a national smash hit? Yes, it did. It what was, was uh, called I Want to Hold You in My Dreams Tonight. That was also recorded and released on an independent label that I helped start uh, because the industry would not uh, accept the, the project. Uh, it was four minutes and 12 seconds long with a recitation in the middle and it was a ballad. And for an artist to have a first record like that, it was an unheard of thing. But in 1975, it was uh, a number seven record. Uh, and that was, you know, mm -hmm. a, a big deal for me. That's right. But that's that's another thing where you're a little stubborn and and you've made up your mind that you want to... So many times when you believe so strong in a thing like that, uh, it's hard to convince somebody else that it's right. You've had all the time in the world to think it out, but it's hard to get them to see your point, isn't it? Yeah, uh, that's always been the case, and it's it seems to be the case a lot with, with all of us in any, you know, anything we're trying to do. But if you don't believe in what you're involved in, then how can you expect anyone else to? And if they don't believe and go along with it, then uh, if you're not going to waste your energy and you believe in it, then see it through to the limit. That's so right. that's what I try to do. I wish I had guts enough to do that about a lot of things I feel about. You have to just be proud of you know what you're involved in. Stella? We just happened to have a tape of you back in 1976 singing I want to hold you in my dreams tonight. Let's take a look at it. Okay. I want to hold you in my dreams tonight When I'm holding you Every name seems so right Even when I'm sleeping Dreams again. 
That was Stella Parton with I Want to Hold You in My Dreams Tonight. That was a top 10 hit in 1975. Was it 75? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, that was one of the most popular songs of that year. Mm -hmm. You're kind of proud of that, weren't you? Yeah, I am. And, so, and uh, you had a lot of hits after that, too. Right. What were some of them? Uh, Undercover Lovers, Danger of a Stranger. Undercover Lover. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, Danger of a Stranger, uh, Standard Lie Number One, I'm Not That Good at Goodbye, uh -huh. Four Little Letters. Did you write uh, most of those? Stormy Weather. Uh, no, I didn't write any of those that were on Electra. None of my uh, uh, chart records on Electra were my own compositions. We'll be right back with Stella Parton after this. And I want to hold you in my dreams again. We're talking with Stella Parton. Now, uh, uh, your musical image later made a change when you got a producer who was a member of the Commodores. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. That was a great uh, learning experience and uh, an exciting time for me. Uh, we um, worked for six months on this album. We didn't stay in the studio every day working, but uh, we wrote a lot of the music together. Uh, Mylon Williams is uh, the producer that we're talking about, and we worked at Motown Studios with uh, all the Motown influence. And um, it was amazing to me how the musical influence that he had grown up with was uh, a lot like the musical influence that I had grown up with. His mother used to listen to the Grand Ole Opry, and we used to listen to Fats Domino. So we kind of like put those musical influences together from uh, Mississippi and East Tennessee, and. Uh, I think we came up with a real good album. I'm you real sure proud did. of that project. Now, Stella, you've always been your own person and sort of a loner, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that that's had any negative effects on your career? Uh, or has I, it been good for it? I think it's been good for me as a person uh, to always know my own mind and always stand up for what I believe in, regardless <clears> of what the outcome is. Uh, because you have to always be true to yourself and in spite of everything. But I think it has had some negative influences on my career as far as the progress of my career because people don't always understand where I'm coming from. They uh, uh, misread uh, a lot of my uh, attitudes as being arrogance or aloofness when really I'm just, uh, uh, I'm, I kind of have tunnel vision and, and have, you know, a plan. I know people say all the time, they say, that's Dolly's sister. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you overcame all that. That doesn't bother me that people say it. Uh, it's nothing you can do about it anyhow. No, well, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a matter of life. I was born you know, into a family, and I have a reason to have been born into the family. Uh, I'm proud of everyone in my family, and I love them all, and I get along with them all. It only bothers me if people do it in an arrogant way. Yeah. Like I did a, a major TV talk show one morning, and the person that interviewed me, uh, in order to cover for their own lack of uh, homework, they tried to make me look stupid. And I resent that, you know. They, Did they you only, tell them? I, I didn't tell, uh, tell them on television, but I told them later. That's a pretty good way you should have told them on television. Well, I said if you'd done your homework, you'd know that this, this, this. But see, I still look arrogant when I say that, because people don't realize that, you know, I don't I think have... you're arrogant. I'm proud of you that you're your own well, person. Well, I appreciate and that. You look like a teenager. Well, thank you. And, and but you got a son. 
That's a teenager. What's his name? Tim. What does he do? Well, he goes to school all the time. He's professional girl watcher at the moment. Professional girl watcher. <laughs> right. I want to talk to that boy. Is that him over there? <laughs> That's him. Stay with it, boy. You're on the right track. <laughs> Well, let me see. I guess I've asked you about all the questions I can think of. Kept you here too long. You got a lot of things to do. Oh, I've enjoyed talking with you. I it's fun to too. talk to somebody that's got the same accent. You know, we can just say, get over there and be quiet, and uh, you can shut up, and, and we understand exactly what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we ought to talk about, you know, talk about, about uh, Sevier County and so mm -hmm. forth. Do you know where Frog Alley is? Yeah. I know where Frog Alley Frog is. Frog Alley is a real place now, isn't it? We're not kidding. You. Natty Branch. I, I worked what? in Natty Branch. Natty Branch. Yeah, Booger Town. I got friends what? in Booger Town. <laughs> and, uh, Where's Booger Town? Uh, it's right over from Possum Holler. Possum Holler? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord, yes. What's I the population? I used to live in Possum, Possum Holler. <laughs> oh, about uh, 422, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Yeah, you and have to do Dumplin'? that. Dumplin'? You know where Dumplin' no, is? No, I haven't been to Dumplin'. Dumplin'? No, I've been to Corn Pone. Is that right close to Corn Pone? Where? Corn Pone. Corn Pone? No, uh -huh. no. Corn Pone's five or six miles away. Is it? Oh, yeah. It'd take you an hour or two to get there. But, uh, uh Dumplin is near... What about Gum Stump? Near... Have, hmm? you, have you been to Gum Stump? Gum Stump? Mm-hmm. Now, you're running into some places I have. I'm, I really don't know my way around <laughs> in Sevier County. Dumplin's oh. right down next to the expressway. There. Yeah. We've been talking with Stella Park. <laughs> Join us again for yesteryear in Nashville. <laughs>